Morning youth, hope you're all okay. We are continuing our series today on hearing God because if you're in relationship with someone, you need to hear from them, don't you? Christianity is not just a religion where you go along to church and do your bit and then go on and get on with your week. It's more to do with your relationship with Jesus. So a really important part is hearing from him. If you struggle like some of us do, then actually this is the session for you to listen to. We've already done one on spiritual health that Kurt did the other week and we did mind blocks last week. And this week we are looking how God speaks to us in a still small voice. And we're looking at the story of Elijah. So we're going to start by watching a clip about that story and how God spoke to Elijah. So here it comes. Elijah was on the run. After he had killed the wicked prophets of Baal, the evil queen Jezebel threatened to kill him for all that he had done. King Ahab and Jezebel had wiped out all the other prophets. Elijah was the only one left, so it's safe to say that this was not an empty threat on Jezebel's part. Elijah had called it quits. He ran for his life. He left everyone and everything behind. He eventually came to a broom tree that was all by itself, just like he was. He lay down underneath it and prayed and asked God to take his life, but there was no reply. After Elijah finished praying, he lay down under the broom tree and went to sleep. As he was sleeping, an angel appeared to him and shook him awake. Get up and eat, the angel said. Elijah looked around and right beside his head was some nice warm bread baked on hot stones and a jar full of water. So Elijah did what the angel said. He ate some bread, drank some water, and then he lay back down. But the angel shook him again and told him to eat more because Elijah had a long journey ahead of him and he would surely need the strength. So Elijah ate and drank some more. Elijah went on to travel for 40 days and nights to a place called Mount Sinai, where he found a nice cave to spend the night. While he was there, the Lord said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah started talking about how he had served God faithfully, but the people of Israel had done the exact opposite. They were tearing down God's altars and had killed all of God's other prophets. And now they were trying to kill him. God told Elijah to go out onto the mountain and stand before him. Once Elijah was there, standing on the mountain, God passed by him. Suddenly, there was a huge windstorm that hit the mountain. The wind was so strong that it tore rocks right off the side of the mountain. But God wasn't in the wind. Then there was an earthquake. Elijah held on tight as the ground shook. Once it finished, he realized that God wasn't in the earthquake either. After the earthquake, a fire began to blaze around Elijah, but God wasn't in the fire either. That's when Elijah heard it, the sound of a gentle whisper. Elijah quickly wrapped his cloak around his face because he knew that this was God. Elijah stood before God on the mountain and God asked him again, what are you doing here? Elijah's response was the same. He told God about his concerns again. Then God gave him a plan. He told Elijah to go and anoint a new king and a new prophet to take his place. So Elijah went out and found Elisha. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel never were able to kill Elijah. In fact, Elijah never actually died. God brought him directly into heaven. But that's a different story for another time. The End So I wonder how you think Elijah was expecting God to speak to him. I wonder if he thought it might be a big booming voice of, I don't know, because God's so big, right? He's like created the whole universe. So surely when he speaks, it's in a really big voice. But actually God spoke to him in a still, small voice, in a quiet whisper. I wonder if you ever heard God speak to you and what did it sound like? Was it a big noise or was it something really small, really quiet in your head? Um, and I wonder what God said to you. I wonder why we expect him always to be so loud. And I wonder why. Why would God be quiet? Why would he speak quietly to us? For me, I had it very recently. I was up in Rotherham on mission just recently and we were out on the streets. And the second day, 
in the morning. I was just in the quiet in my hotel bedroom and I was getting ready to go. So I wasn't like rushing around or anything. I was going quite slowly, but just getting my bits together. And I just in that quiet time sensed God say to me, you should take some tissues with you today. Now, I kind of dismissed it and thought maybe it wasn't God. Maybe it was just my brain and why should I take tissues? When really, actually, how hard would it have been for me to pick up some tissues and put them in my bag? But anyway, I didn't do it. And so we went out in the morning and we were talking to some people and I managed to put my hand in a bird poo. Ugh. And I was like, oh, I wish I had some tissue. Oh, maybe I should have listened to God. But then later that afternoon, we went back to the church for lunch and then I felt again, I should take some tissues. And I thought, no, 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 I've already missed my chance with that. So I'm not going to bother taking them this time. And so I went out and met this homeless guy called David. And he was an old guy and he was out in the cold and he was desperately hungry and his shoes were falling apart and he really needed some help. So I went and bought him some food from the bakery. And um, when I did, because he'd been out in the cold, I don't know if you've ever seen that, like sometimes your nose starts running and his nose was running really badly and I didn't have any tissues. And thankfully the bakery did have some, so we were able to use them. But I was just like, why didn't I bother listening to God? Why didn't I hear that still small voice and respond to it rather than ignoring it? But then another time we were having a prayer meeting on Zoom because of lockdown with church and it was a really good prayer meeting and I felt really filled with the Holy Spirit after and I thought I'm going to go out for a walk and I'm just going to walk around the block and walk home, maybe even pop into the car and get some Maltesers or something. But on the way round, I really sensed God was saying to me, go over to the golf course instead. So I did. And this was in the summer, so it was still really light in the evening and everything. And as I was walking across there, I saw a guy sitting on the bench on his own. And I thought maybe he's the reason that God sent me over to the golf course. So I went and spoke to him and we ended up chatting about faith. And I see him every now and then and he's getting more and more interested in Jesus. So that's just an example of when, again, I was walking. I didn't have loads of blaring music on. I wasn't really busy in my mind. And I heard from God and I responded this time, thankfully. I was actually obedient. And actually, I believe that one day this guy's going to come to know Jesus because of it. And I do pray for him all the time and still visit him and talk to him about Jesus. So that was one example of me actually responding to that still small voice. I wonder about you. Have you heard it and have you ignored it or have you heard it and you've actually responded and what happened? Now, in 1 Kings 19, it gives us this verse from what we've just seen in Elijah about what happened. So it says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. So in the NRV version, it says gentle whisper. In the ESV, it says the sound of a low whisper. In the New King James version, it says a still small voice or a delicate whispering voice. The message says a gentle and quiet whisper. And the Amplified version says a sound of gentle stillness and a still small voice. So there's something in common with all of those things. And it's the fact that if we are really busy listening to lots of loud noises, if we are really busy in our minds and rushing around all over the place, doing lots of different stuff, or if we just really got lots of thoughts. And remember last week we were talking about mind blocks. The still small voice, this gentle whisper might become really hard to hear. And so going back to that question, why does God choose so often to speak to us in that way, in that still small voice? Well, I was hearing somebody else talk about this and they were saying how if you shout at someone, you shout from across the room, you shout from a distance. But actually, when someone whispers, you have to come in close. And as I was saying at the start, it's about our relationship with God. And he wants so much to have a close relationship with you. And part of relationship, as we know, is listening to each other. 
So when God whispers, it's because he wants you to come close. And actually, when we're walking close with him is when we're going to hear most from him and when we're going to see amazing stuff happening in our life because we'll be walking on the best plans for our life. So I really encourage you to spend some time in quiet. If it's going out for a walk, that's where I find it the most helpful. Even if I'm listening to music at the start, I often then put the headphones away for five or ten minutes and just see what God's got to say. Or maybe it's just putting some quiet worship music on in the background and being able to focus your mind to listen to God. Or even if it's just when you pray, instead of just blah, 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 stop and just listen and see what he's got to say back. Because that's what conversation's all about. Um, now, the next thing I want to show you is just a really short clip from a woman who is a hoarder, just so you can see what clutter does. So here you go. This room is my dining room. Right now, it is used as uh, a place for my computer, for my clothes, my medicine. I spend a lot of time on the computer uh, when I'm not doing other things. Uh, the dogs are enjoying laying on all my clothes because they have mommy scent. Um, you can't believe it, but there is a actually a great dining room table underneath here. I have one usable chair that I know of. There might be some more around the table. I really don't remember, but became a dumping ground for clothes, pop bottles, junk. And buried underneath are containers. There's new stuff. I found a brand new pair of boots. Only one boot, though. Doesn't help me. Um, and if it didn't fit in this room, I put it in my spare bedroom. This is my kitchen. Um, a sink that has trash all over it. Um, I can't really get to it without moving all of that away. Um, cabinets that have food in it that starts from 1998 and the cans are black. This can it had an expiration date of December 2001. Cream and chicken soup, which will never be used. Okay, I wonder who of you has a messy bedroom or I wonder who has a very tidy room. And I wonder if you're in between. For me, when I was a teenager, my room was always really messy. And now my room is really tidy. And the reason is, is that as soon as one thing goes out of place for me, everything goes out of place. And I wonder if any of you can relate. Um, I wonder with this lady, does she make you feel a bit better about how your room looks? Because she had so much stuff. Her room was so busy with stuff. And in her dining room, like you're just hearing her say about, she thinks she's got some dining chairs under there somewhere. And I wonder how that relates to us hearing from God. Well, I wonder if our brain gets so cluttered with noise and so cluttered with thoughts that sometimes his voice is hidden to us. So it's just an example. Perhaps think about in your life where your brain might become like that hoarder and be full of so much stuff. And actually, sometimes we just need to have those moments where we get rid of the clutter and for me, for example, I can't get on with my work on my desk if there's clutter everywhere. So I get rid of all the clutter and then I'm ready. I'm ready to hear from God. I'm ready to do my work. And I wonder with you if you can have that in your life and you can think of some practical ways of doing that. And the final thing I want us to do is just have some time for some quiet prayers because we've heard God speaks in the quiet. So actually we can speak to him in the quiet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to time us for 20 seconds. And in that 20 seconds, I want for you to just pray for the title of things that I say. So the first one is going to be the thing I'm most thankful for. So here goes 20 seconds of quiet time. So I'm just going to sit here doing pretty much nothing, which is going to be very boring. So you might want to just close your eyes and pray to God. So here you go for 20 seconds, the thing you're most thankful for.
Okay, for the next 20 seconds, I want you to talk to God about the thing that you would most like to see happen in your life. So for the next 20 seconds, I want you to talk to God about what you're sorry for. You might need to take longer than 20 seconds for any of these. I don't know why I just think about this one. So do feel free to pause it if you need to. Okay, for the next 20 seconds, I want you to pray for somebody who needs, either needs to know Jesus or needs his help. And for the final 20 seconds, I want you to tell God how you need help. And then after that 20 seconds, I'm just going to wave and say goodbye. And then you can spend some time just listening to God back. So here you go. Here's 20 seconds. 